Hello and welcome to episode 4 of the Confounded Chronicles. In this episode we'll carry on where we left off. Uh, we just finished putting the stepper motors on the mill and we're going about wiring them up. Uh, this week I built the big board that's going to hold all the electronics and the stepper controllers for the stepper motors. I got all the wires run and I almost have everything plugged in so let's get to the fun video. So the kit I'm using is a NEMA 23 kit. I think it's like 570 ounce inch. Well I know it's 570 ounce inch. Uh, it's 48 volt power supply, comes with a 5 volt power supply and the three stepper drivers. I'm going to use a parallel port system to control this. I run my other mill with Linux CNC or CNC, whatever it's called nowadays. Um, and I've, I've been super blown away with it. Uh, way better than Mach 3 and uh, I've never had issues with it. So that's what this mill is going to run on. Here I'm just finding the placement for all the components. I'm going to mount it to the side of the mill. I want to keep the under or the inside of that uh, stand cavity free for a flood coolant system. Uh, so we're just going to mount this on a plate on the side of the machine and then I'll shroud it later. And I'm just trying to find the best positions to minimize crosstalk and get inside my allowance of space. What we're going to use for backer is just a piece of three quarter inch Baltic birch. Like I said, there'll be a whole shroud around it so you're not going to notice what material it's made out of. And initially I was just going to drill and bolt this thing to the side of the unit, but I decided to go with inserts. Inserts just look better, they look more finished, and then if you remove it, you're not left with a weird looking hole in the side of the unit. This is also me trying to use a quarter inch bit to fit an insert that's not quarter inch sized, so uh, I went and got a proper size bit, and voila, fits like a glove. That's a little insert pulling tool, so you just put it in, give it a squeeze, the insert crushes, and then it pinches that sheet metal, and now you have a nice threaded hole that looks proper. So we're going to put one bolt in here, and then we're going to use the locations on the little wood backer to mount the remaining three. A little spring center punch to find the proper center hole. Chase it with a, or start the pilot with a 1 8 and then finish it up to proper size. I also did check inside to make sure I'm not drilling into a big bottle of acetone or coolant or something, and we're all good. <laughs> if in the future you find yourself in a situation where you want to put some inserts in, don't buy the cheapest insert tooling possible. This one's actually moderately priced and it works fairly well. Um, just the operator has to learn how to use it properly. The cheap ones just seem to mangle threads. Don't ask me how I know. So here's the final location or the final positioning of all the electronics. Uh, I did all the wiring inside because it's more comfortable. Um, it worked a little bit better in this way. I could make my shroud smaller. The wiring isn't exactly how I want it to be, but came out just fine. Uh, here it is without the zip ties, neatening everything up. I still have to wire in the uh, main steppers to the little driver boards. The reason I'm doing the voiceovers to all these videos now is uh, is this little contraption I have on my main door. You can see there's uh, two holes in it. The bottom has a little fan, which is somewhat noisy, hence the voiceover. And what it does is pulls air out to this kind of heat exchanger I have for an outside stove and blows nice warm air inside. It's like minus 40 in the winter here, so along with the electric heat that I have heating the shed, I wanted a way to get it really warm, and this seems to work awesome. Anyways, uh, the next thing to do is to wire the extensions to, up to the stepper motors. Here I'm just using some four conductor cable. I think this is like speaker wire or something. It's 18 gauge or 16 gauge, a little overkill, um, but it was fairly soft. It was the most supple stuff I could find, and, uh, and it, it should work just well or just fine. So I'm going to make all the solder connections, I'll heat shrink them, and then I'll cover everything in heat shrink. And then once I'm finished, I'll probably zip tie that whole cable assembly to the side of the stepper motor, uh, just to keep everything from flopping around. And uh, You don't want the flexing to happen where the solder joint was made, because it's just going to fatigue and break over time. This is me using the various tools I have on hand to shrink the shrink wrap, um, none of which are working adequately, except this one. Oh, this gets the job done. That's about it. I did all the other motors and I'll save you from watching that, but this is how we look right now. Like I said, I gotta neaten everything up with some zip ties and some mounting brackets and whatnot, but we have everything ready to rock. Uh, I should have this thing running in the next couple days, but since I upload this video on Friday, uh, I, I'll have it probably running Friday, but you won't be able to see it until next week. Unless you wanna follow me on Instagram, I'll probably have some video up there. Um, if not, that's cool too. You can just wait till next week. Uh, but thank you very much for watching my videos. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm having a ton of fun and it keeps me on projects. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Take care.